It's the hypothesis of the chief principles of the Thunderbolts project that within human memory, in only the last several thousand years, the Earth's sky and the inner solar system looked profoundly different than they do today. An epoch of planetary instability resulted in extraordinary electromagnetic events and global catastrophes that were recorded in myths and legends around the world. Today, we shift our focus to perhaps the most important question one can explore when considering this thesis. What were the effects of these events on humankind? And to what extent did they shape our world and our species to this day? At the recent Thunderbolts Project Conference, EU 2015, Paths of Discovery, I presented a 43-minute discourse concerning the catastrophism carry-forward effect upon modern man that dealt with a multitude of questions left largely unaddressed by the academic community. We members and colleagues of the Thunderbolt Project mostly agree that within the relatively recent past, most likely in the prehistory era of perhaps several thousand years, the inner solar system was very different than it is today. Human beings on planet Earth experienced and witnessed events almost unimaginable in their destructive scale and shockingly adverse effect on life as they had known it for thousands of years. The evidentiary case that these events occurred, including the compatible mytho-historical reconstructions offered by such scholars as David Talbot, Bardu Cardona, Ev Cochran, and others, and originally inspired by Emanuel Velikovsky, is undeniable to anyone who honestly acknowledges the evidence presented. Those who wish to learn more about the electric universe catastrophist model have at their disposal a plethora of published materials. It is not my purpose to try to convince anyone that these events occurred. Rather, I seek to illuminate the most vital issue. What were the artificial, religious, and psychological effects of the ancient catastrophes on human thinking and behavior, and to what extent have these effects carried forward to today? The end of the so-called Golden Age, culminating in the Great Catastrophe, was the most collectively traumatic event that humankind has ever experienced. The near decimation of the global population carried with it effects so significant that they touched literally every aspect of human life. These include environmental, physiological, and psychological factors that would have transformed the human condition in extreme ways, and about some of which we can only make educated guesses. Today, I would like to focus specifically on what I consider the most penetrating and important element of this transformation, and that is mankind's ideas and perceptions of what we call God and the development of certain religious themes. Please note that I encourage the viewer not to form any presumptions about my own beliefs or lack thereof. For those familiar with the respective works of our mytho-historians, many of the counterproductive ideas that got started and adopted in the wake of these global catastrophes may seem self-evident. These include the development of the concept that God became angry with the human race and the development of the concept that God decided to punish and or cleanse us severely with violent, global, genocidal, or homicidal catastrophes. Part of what followed was legalism, the development of the idea that man was meant to live under, obey, invasive fiat moral law versus eternal inspirational principles. Thus we see the bedrock of much of modern society, the idea that law is the backbone of order and punishment is the proper response to unacceptable behavior. 
An expression of this mindset was, of course, seen in the development of God-placating guilt and fear-based religions. Humankind in various cultures rapidly adopted outlandish, violent, capricious concepts of the creation while rejecting more sensible ones. This era produced an explosion of anthropomorphic planet god mythologies along with mass confusion, mysticism, and superstition. The subsequent religious and cultural factors could include the general bias of catastrophe survivor religious testimony. That is, I did thus and thus prior to the impending catastrophe, such things as prayer, fasting, worship, etc. God affirmed and I survived. Of course, no rebuttal is possible from those that did likewise but didn't survive. Also, the development of formal religions, a major part of which is always an explanation of why it all went wrong, along with an explanation of how to fix it, or induce God to fix it. The development of holidays, including Sabbaths and other holy days, periods. The Roman Saturnalia and the Greek Cronia, for instance. Holy days morphed into secular holidays like New Year's Day, Halloween, All Saints Day, Day of the Dead, Easter, etc. Mankind's exposure to formations in the sky, primarily surrounding Saturn and involving Mars and Venus with their plasma discharges, inaugurated the world's major religious symbols such as the Ankh, cross and Celtic cross, yin-yang, star and crescent, the ancient and modern swastikas, etc. The epoch of planetary catastrophe can also explain the development of ritual, God-ordained rites, ceremonies, chants, etc. All much infused in formal religion seen to this day along with sacrifices, strictures, ordinances, and sacraments to help God love or feel better disposed toward us. A focus or concentration of worship on idols and sacred icons, leading from mild to severe altered states of consciousness. The development of more intense clannish tribal identification and inter-tribal competition and warfare. The ultimate development of celestial, magical, or exotic living entities such as dysanthropic angels and hierarchies of angels, the devil, demons and imps, ifrits, jinns and genies, fairies, leprechauns, elves, goblins and ghouls, witches, etc. An obvious visible testimony of the planetary configuration just previous to the catastrophic epoch can be seen in global architectural developments. These include the inauguration of a lithic monument building technology and a monument building era with pyramids being a major theme. The development of architectural elements from the prototypical stupa upside-down model of the polar configuration, replete with domes, pillars, spires, cupolas, nested circle layouts. Another factor is the inordinate time and attention to producing petrographs and petroglyphs. It is estimated that it took months under arduous conditions to produce many of these. I conclude with two questions for the viewer to ponder. Has modern man overcome the mythological mindset? Or has modern man just gone through an extended period of forgetting and drifting adaptation, not really dealing with what happened and why? Whatever the answer, another important question we can ask of ourselves is, can we be more intellectually responsible in our belief systems?